As Katie said, I'm Michael Sarlett. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Postal Picks. We're a little different than the other companies and people that are presented here in that we're not specifically made for the aging community, but we definitely tailor to them. Um, and what I really want to talk about, not so much of what we do, but really how we design our product and our experience with the aging community in mind. So uh, we make mobile apps. Um, I should have said that first. And the problem we were uh, trying to solve was it's really difficult to send family members prints of photos that you take with your iPhone. Um, and what happened was one of my founders um, had his first child with his wife. They were taking hundreds of photos literally every week of their new baby with their iPhone. And they honestly couldn't figure out how to send these photos to their family members as physical prints. I mean, they want to put them on the wall, on the fireplace. Um, a lot of people in the aging community, sending someone a picture in, the, in an email, it's not, it's not really a personal experience, really for anyone. Um, so we wanted to create that personal experience with the content that's being created on a mobile phone. So he came up with a solution, and it was really develop an app for ordering home-delivered prints of your mobile photos. And our initial concept let you order you know, your standard sizes, 4x6, 5x7. Since then, we've grown um, to different mobile platforms, different products. We print on aluminum. We print iPhone cases, a lot of things like that. So um, we had some considerations to make. Sorry about this image. It was the only stock image I could find in PowerPoint. <laughs> Um, but really, so we, we had to think, look, we're solving a problem for not super tech savvy people. Because you can manually transfer photos from your iPhone to your computer and then figure out how to transfer them from your computer to your printer, get special paper. But I mean, even for a very tech savvy person, it's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, it, takes, it takes a while to do. Um, and we also needed, needed the aging community to be able to send and receive photos with ease. So the main use case we were thinking was that parents um, with young children would be sending these photos to their parents. So the grandparents would receive these packages and we'd have marketing materials in there. So, I mean, ideally, the grandparents would start using the app as well. So that's what we had to design around. And fast forward two years and we kind of realized we have this, as all businesses, with this continuum of users. You can kind of look at, as, at, at um, this as age but I also think about, about it as like um, whether someone grew up with technology or not. Not whether they're tech savvy, but whether they were immersed in it when they grew up. So younger people were just born um, closer to today, so they obviously grew up with it. Older people didn't. We do have a core demographic in the middle that we've realized, kind of 25 to 45 year old females mostly. Um, but what we've realized is that if we design our products for the end of this continuum here, everyone else will be able to use it. So there's some exceptions, but generally, that's how we design. So we go and find these people. We actually go and watch people test. Really, my own parents are kind of my litmus test. <laughs> like, I'll show them our new concepts and designs, and if they can use it, then I'm like, okay, cool. Most people can probably use this. <laughs> um, my dad's actually an eye doctor himself, so he tells me you know, all about, like Monica was telling, um, talking about like contrast issues, sizing of text, things like that. Um, and, and that's worked really well uh, for us. So some takeaways, the first two are pretty obvious. Of course, you, you want large text, large buttons. Um, especially when you're dealing with a tiny little cell phone screen, you have a limited real estate, so you wanna make the best use of that real estate you can and make all the elements large. This next one's kind of interesting, stored financial information. So the first prototype of our app, we were kind of thinking what features we wanted to include. One of them saved your credit card information at the end of the checkout process. And it gave you an option to kind of opt out, but it wasn't very obvious. And literally when I gave that to my parents' friends and, and people in the aging community, they like were furious with us. <laughs> they, they honestly, they thought we were stealing their information. They're like, How do, what, what's going on? They got really, worried about it, so we're like, okay, we'll probably leave that feature out, and we still don't store credit card information. We may introduce it, but make it kind of a more uh, intuitive way to, to do it. Um, and this is really interesting, longer attention spans. So I've found this through our research and also hearing about research other people have been doing. 
Um, older people tend to have longer attention spans when it comes to using technology um, than a younger person would. So if you think about something like a checkout process when you're buying something, let's say you have like a 10 step checkout process. Um, an older person is more likely to finish that long process than a, longer, than a younger person. I mean, one of the theories behind that is that younger people are just so immersed with technology that we have short attention spans and we get distracted really easily. So if we see like a pop-up, we're like, oh, what's that? And we'll click it and we'll be gone. You know, and we'll forget about the checkout process. Um, so you gotta be careful with that though, because you don't wanna optimize for that because then you're gonna alienate you know, the rest of your continuum if you say, yeah, let's make a 200 step checkout process, which you obviously wouldn't do. Um, so I just wanna give you an, uh, kind of a, a preview of um, one of the decisions we made um, by testing with the aging community. So this is one of our product pages. It's an aluminum print, so it's a kind of a cool product. We infuse your photo directly on a piece of metal. Um, and what would happen is you click one of these icons to select a size, then you select your photo from your iPhone. Um, but we really wanted to make sure like people knew what the heck an aluminum print was when they get here, because it's not very obvious. So what we'd do is I'd sit, we'd direct people here and say, okay, where would you go if you want to learn more about what an aluminum, pro, uh, an aluminum print is? And uh, does anyone in here know where to go if you were to go to this page? Okay, well you probably know because it's blown up on a giant screen. But if you look at this on your cell phone, like that little product info button is really hard to find. Um, not just people in the aging community, like anyone. This is just a poor design decision by us. Um, but the aging community had like twice as hard of a time finding that. Um, so that's an improvement we had to make. Same with this checkout bar. So when people came back to this page, they were like, okay, what do I do now? How do I go to checkout? We have this little go to cart button that's hard to see and a shop more button that's hard to see as well. So we made an improvement um, and this is gonna be our next release. Actually, in a couple of days, it'll be in the App Store. Um, we, put, we took that product info out and put it right in front of your face when you hit the page. So it's very obvious and you can flick through and see other examples. And then we also made the checkout bar much more obvious. And instead of including text at all, we just included an icon that has, um, that's, yeah, points forward and actually pretty much gives you um, you know, the mental idea of uh, that's where I need to go to check out. And it has the card there. So just some takeaways. Um, one is this notion of getting out of the building. That's like kind of a hot term in the startup world. But it basically means like get out of your office, your home office or whatever, and go meet with these people. So like Kari was talking about, that's basically what they do. And just doing that, even if you meet with maybe five people, you know, per iteration, it's gonna, it's gonna give you a world of difference in your product development process. You're gonna see things that metrics on paper just don't tell you. Um, and also, like I said, optimize for the end of your continuum. And if you do that, then you're gonna, in most cases, please everyone on the other side. Um, and then, like I said, just make decisions using a combination of live testing and recorded metrics. I mean, both are good on their own, so you can look at usage metrics of what people are clicking on, and then you can go test with people in their you know, natural habitats. Um, but once you mesh those together, it's, it's honestly a night and day difference of the type of products you can create and how much you can please your users. Um, so that's it, oh yeah, we're hiring developers too, backend developers. If anyone in here is one or knows of one, shoot me an email or come talk to me. That's it. Yeah. A lot of different methods. We advertise, well not advertise, but we market a lot through social networks. So Instagram has been a huge source of growth because we actually print the square photos that you create on Instagram. So we do a lot of marketing through there. Um, we also are big in certain communities like the crafting community, people at Scrapbook. They tend to take a lot of pictures on their phones and then they need to print them. So we market through them.